Hey YouTubers, thanks for tuning back into another video. Today we're diving back into the Turbo EK Coupe and uh, you know, at this point, a lot of you guys are probably excited for a chance to own this car and uh, I can't blame you. It's, uh, it's going off without a hitch. So let's go ahead and roll the intro and get this party started. Um, I've been, you know, doing a little bit of a, a collection here, uh, putting parts together and getting all the items situated. I did get started on the little car um, yesterday, and I made a lot of progress. But um, I'm curious. It's really handy for me to be able to film right here on my iPhone. So um, if you have any, you know, problems with the quality or whatever, um, or if you prefer the iPhone, just leave me a comment. Let me know that the quality is okay. But uh, we're gonna talk a little bit today about the parts that I've got, kind of what I did yesterday off camera, and uh, catch you guys up to speed. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So boys and girls, I've got an assortment of items here. Um, I've got four struts and springs that are absolutely teetotally stock. And uh, by stock, I mean just original equipment. The car had stock struts on it with a set of what looked like Megan coil springs, like lowering springs, and they were, not in the best condition. Um, some of the coils were really rusted and the struts were killed. So um, stock ride height is going to do, you know, absolutely perfect for what we're looking to accomplish here. I also got some timing covers here because I noticed in some of my previous videos, whenever we made 400 horsepower on the last B18, um, there are some comments that were like, nobody ever puts the timing covers back whenever they do anything internal on one. Well, the top timing cover is missing and we're putting it back. In addition to that, this is a P75, which comes on a 94 up Integra. So this is an OBD1, OBD2. This one is actually an OBD2. It's got the little emissions uh, solenoid on top here. So if you pull this off, it's just a direct port into the intake manifold. But we've got a throttle body that now supports the map sensor, whereas the other one was an OBD0. On a B18A1, it's like firewall mounted on like a DA Integra. So we've got the right throttle body now. We're gonna clean all this up. New gasket here, new gasket for that. And I'm gonna do the, uh, the little wire wheel job on this guy and get him all nice and neat. And on top of that, way down in here, I have this mysterious ring that was missing. And this is what was allowing the timing belt to actually walk off the end of the cam, uh, cam gear and the crank gear. So we'll put this on, it's got a concave to it. And we'll put this on and it'll stop that from happening again here in the future or you know at all so i got all these items put together um, i want to really catch you up on the car itself uh, but before i do i want to give you guys the opportunity to say goodbye and uh, wish the little purple hatchback uh, a good life and uh, he's going to a great home so uh, it's possible that you'll see him here again real real soon but uh, for the time being this is the, uh, the last of the last here. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and uh, this is the last you'll see of the purple hatchback. So it's been real, it's been fun. We've done it twice. And uh, the second time we decided to pass, but he's going to a good home. So the little purple hatchback's going to a friend of ours. Um, he's gonna end up being something that it's probably another little street strip car and uh i'm kind of hoping that's the case but let's go ahead and catch you guys up and uh get situated right here in the garage all right boys and girls so in wide view here we have no engine and i'm going to encourage you to follow me on instagram uh, even on facebook some of the stories and the posts that i've made are a little easier to keep up with than trying to put it all into a video whenever I've got so much on my plate. But yesterday, a lot transpired. Uh, the transmission I actually got out uh, before I decided to go ahead and pull the motor out. The engine had a leak on the back of it, and it was on the, uh, the water tube. 
but whenever I got it out, I was able to, you know, see it. Whereas in the car, everything was just nasty. But I got the transmission out. I got him all cleaned up. The uh, infamous oven cleaner here and a little bit of wire wheel. And it's uh, A-OK, -okay, Mento Pinto. And uh, then we've got the motor over here. So last night, I went ahead and like tried to get everything situated to the best of the ability you know, for me to be able to, uh, you know, get it all cleaned up and then, um, you know, just try to get it back to ground zero from that point. I'm pretty sure this guy was sitting up off the ground a little bit last night, but, um, we need to check him out, make sure that, uh, everything's good down here and my fingers are in the way, but so back to what I was saying. All right, guys. So there was a slight leak back here. Um, there were several hoses that I found that were just not, you know, completely secure like this one. Um, there was a lot of dirt and grime back here. So to get everything back to, you know, what I was comfortable with, I just decided to pull it. The, uh, the intake manifold itself, I knew I wanted to swap out and I knew I had one close by. So, um, that wasn't that big of a deal, but one of the items that I found that was kind of peculiar whenever I got this was, the uh, the intake manifold only had nuts from what I could see outside the car on the four corners. So with that being the case, I thought maybe, you know, someone had started on pulling the manifold off or maybe just didn't put all the nuts back. But whenever I got under the car, the two center ones down here were kind of rounded off. And that might have been the reason that, you know, it didn't ever get swapped out. But a lot of the stuff that was kind of odd on the OBD zero intake manifold is no longer in the equation now. So this will just make things simpler and it gave me an opportunity to kind of check everything out. So it's uh, super, super clean, um, you know, not clean, clean, but a lot cleaner than it was. There's no dirt and grime on it. Uh, we've got a few little things that we need to do here before we tear into it and uh, start working our way through the list. But overall, it's uh, it's in pretty good shape. All right, so over here the other day, a lot of the items that I've shown you on the previous list came in. This is the window regulator. Uh, this is the AEM wideband. Uh, this in particular is the, uh, let's see, what is that one? US postage. This is the head studs, and this is the actual pressure plate. So um, we've got a few other items that aren't listed here. Um, our wastegate that we're gonna be using um, and then, you know, ultimately at that point, we've got to, you know, get it all in the car. So over the next day or so, I'm going to be getting some more items in. I needed some, uh, exhaust studs for this one, um, because of the fact that there was one of them broke off in the head and some of the other ones were pretty rough to get out. So we'll get this little guy situated and, uh, we need to go ahead and do the head gasket. We need to go ahead and do the timing belt guide. We need to do the ARP head studs, and then I need to go ahead and adjust the valves, and then just get this guy dolled up, um, change out the pressure plate, and uh, it'll be ready to go back in. Uh, once it's in, we've got a little bit of a, a fiasco with some of the items here. Um, I don't have a welder here at the house, so we're going to lean on some of our buddies. Um, in a previous video, you saw me fumble with this, and this is in the wrong uh, like orientation. So this would end up actually facing the engine um, instead of going down. So we're going to cut that off. Um, we need to look here and see <clears throat> if we've got another fitting. I need a fitting that will go into the oil pan. So we've got all the stuff to make the line, but I don't know. Yep. All right, so there's our fitting, if it'll work. It looks like it might be aluminum. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, we should have everything to make the, the actual um, oil return and oil feed. So we can get that situated before we actually put it in the car, get the manifold bolted on. Oh, and I went ahead and hit it with a little bit of the uh, high heat paint here. So that looks a lot better. And uh, we're in business, guys. So the ECU kit came, uh, so I'm going to drop this off with Will and uh, get him to do the work on that guy. I went ahead and I unboxed the uh, the clean injection injectors we're going to use. Um, these actually have little adapters that go on the top 
that allows them to be able to plug and play on an OBD2 Civic harness. So that's going to be cool there. We'll just use the uh, the existing little grommets in the intake manifold when we pull that out. I uh, got some BKR70 plugs, so that'll be helpful. And the trans has got a slight grind going into third. So we're going to put a quart of this in and then finish it off with the remainder of the, uh, the Honda fluid. Um, we've also got a four bar map sensor here. So for what that's worth, this will allow us to go above 11, 12 pounds of boost uh, to hit our mark if we need to. And then this is the uh, the actual piece here that I was telling you about, the, uh, the ECU kit. So um, we've got the fuel pump, the Walbro 255. So we're not really doing this on E85 because of the capabilities around here for like our gas stations. Um, E85 isn't something you find in a lot of gas stations. You actually most of the time have to drive out of your way to get it. So guys, if you, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I had a bit of a fiasco with these lug nuts. So these are aluminum lug nuts. And I mean, they're really cool and spiffy. They're, uh, what is this, a D1 spec. So it says uh, some kind of part number at the bottom. Um, ultimately, ultimately, here we go again. So... Um, this actually has a tool, like a little key, and you stick the key inside the aluminum lug nut, and then you, you know, lefty loosey, and it comes right off, right? Well, it's not exactly that easy sometimes. So the key is made of steel. The lug nuts are aluminum, and the steel just busts through these little guys, and you are forced to have to try to finagle the whole little lug nut off with what's left. So um, it's in your best interest if you buy aftermarket lug nuts to continue to use steel if you have like a durability concern and they won't have this issue. So boys and girls, to sum it up, we've had an eventful you know, 24 to 48 hours. Other than some exhaust studs, I have everything in my possession to finish the, the little B18. Um, over the next couple days, I'm going to put together a following video. In the next video, we're going to do the head studs. We're going to do the head gasket. We're going to do the intake manifold. And I'm just going to time lapse a lot of it. I'll explain it as we go. But you've seen this a million times. Not on my channel, of course. But this will give you a good look into what's going on with this specific car in the event that you're interested in recreating it or even purchasing this one. So for... Uh, you know, the remainder of it, if you've got any comments, if you've got any questions, please leave them below. Again, this is filmed on my iPhone, so let me know if the quality is, you know, okay. And we'll catch you in the next video, guys. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time.